Hi, this is Dr. Ken Muich, Fibromyalgia Wellness Center, uh, and we're going to be talking about Lyrica today. Uh, Lyrica is uh, the drug for fibromyalgia. If you've seen any television uh, ads, you'll, you will have uh, recognized that fact. Uh, but where, what's the history of Lyrica and, and what's it all about, so to speak? Uh, <coughs> excuse me. I just received this uh, on uh, the Internet, and uh, Pfizer's CEO, uh, a Ian Reedy, or Reddy, uh, has a pay raise of 61%. Uh, now, why is that important? Because Pfizer produces Lyrica and many other medications. So he's gone up to 61% to $27.9 million. That includes all of the benefits and, and all the additions and so forth, retirement and so forth and so on, uh, that a person uh, would uh, get from a company such as Pfizer. So <clears throat> as the drug prices rise, so also uh, in at least 41 uh, medications uh, or drugs from Pfizer, so also did the CEO's uh, pay scale, so to speak, go up. $27.9 million. How many cars, how many boats, how many different things can you get? And yet the prices of uh, medications, drugs, pharmaceuticals are going up all over. Now, uh, Pfizer is very, very interesting. Uh, since 2017, they've been increasing uh, their medications anywhere from, I'd say, maybe 8 to 10% every six months. So they're biting you uh, a little bit at a time instead of some that you've seen that have gone up like 2,000%. Uh, the one gentleman, I think, is in, in jail because uh, of uh, not that, but some other things. So let me give you a little bit of information as far as Lyrica is concerned. It was originally uh, an epileptic medication for epilepsy patients. Uh, it has nothing really to do with fibromyalgia. Uh, and <clears throat> most, it's mostly uh, well tolerated uh, for epileptic patients. Now, there's a lot of common side effects with this. And I want you to, I'm not going to cover all of them, but I'm going to cover those that are most important to fibromyalgia patients or maybe some of the patients out there that have uh, one of the 15 um, different conditions that mimic fibromyalgia. Uh, they, oh, this is from Monson and Schoenstead. Uh, and uh, what they do is they, they evaluate uh, the products and they find out what the side effects are. Uh, dizziness and vertigo, weight gain, headaches, uh, slow thinking, or better known as fibro fog, uh, drowsiness, dry mouth, tremors, uh, let's see, uh, fatigue, weakness, uh, gaseous uh, problems with the stomach, back pain, hypoglycemia, uh, flu-like symptoms, which would be body aches and chills all over, joint pain, and muscle pains. Those are the most common ones. That's not all the most common ones. Those are the ones I thought would be most important for fibromyalgia patients. Uh, I, in my book, uh, I did the same thing. I just put in the most common, and I don't even include some of them that uh, I have not included today, as a matter of fact, uh, in my book. It actually takes up almost a whole page or maybe more than that. So uh, this is very, very interesting because... As I mentioned before, when you take a, uh, a medication pharmaceutical, uh, the FDA looks at it like this. Does it help your problem? Are, is the problem solving better than the side effects? And uh, the FDA uh, admits that every pharmaceutical out there has side effects. They even admit it, okay? But uh, the benefits are, are, are greater than, in other words, the worst problems that you may have. So if you're already a fibromyalgia patient and you have fibro fog and you're taking Lyrica, chances are very good it's probably going to be worse. Now, if you're taking Lyrica, and I've heard from other patients that say, oh man, it's great, you know, it really helps. Like I say, hey, if something's working for you, great. It's not treating the condition, it's treating the symptoms, okay? Treating the symptoms. How long do you want to be on this Lyrica? So I want to give you a little bit more history and information on this Lyrica product because in 2007 I attended, I, I've been obviously attending different conferences and information on fibromyalgia for over 30 years. But from uh, in 2007 there was a conference in California uh, from the National Fibromyalgia Association. Uh, the president of, at that time was Lynn Madeleine, a uh, lovely lady. Uh, if you looked at her you would never believe she had fibromyalgia just like many of you out there. Okay, you don't have to have a cast or, or stitches, so forth and so on, fibromyalgia. You just feel sick. 
Anyway, uh, we had a round table after this convention where a lot of speakers were out there. And the very, very common thing was uh, they'd have uh, representatives from pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical companies. And they would get up on stage and they'd say, with all due respect to uh, my company, we don't have an answer for fibromyalgia. However, we do have this medication that would help you for this and this, so forth and so on. Again, it's symptomatic. Well, afterward, uh, uh, Lynn Madeleine mentioned the concern of, and it is 2007, uh, by the way, it was big time for autism. Big time. Matter of fact, I think uh, autism was on the covers of Newsweek uh, and Time magazine. And uh, Lynn had mentioned that we were getting to be second cousins to autism and we were going to kind of get lost in the, the problem of, of lack of, of information out to people. Keep in mind, the National Fibromyalgia Association at that time, at that time, uh, obtained um, shall we say, monies from people like myself. I would send them uh, some money uh, to keep out the research, whatever they had, and from any companies they had. Otherwise, they weren't getting any money from anybody. And if you're a fibromyalgia patient, you're lucky you're working, no less uh, uh, maybe on disability, maybe even not on disability, sorry to say. Uh, a lot of you have a difficult time getting on, on disability. But anyway, bottom line is, that the concern was that fibromyalgia was going to be uh, something that just disappeared uh, from millions of people uh, that would not get a voice, so to speak. And so she said, uh, we have to get the word out. We don't have the money, but uh, hopefully uh, some things will be in the, in the mix and so forth that we can get some assistance from someone. That was May 2007. One month later, June, I'm watching the news uh, and in the evening, and all of a sudden, guess what comes on? Lyrica. The FDA approved it as the drug of choice for fibromyalgia patients, uh, and it was approved by the National Fibromyalgia Association. Since that time, the National Fibromyalgia Association, I'm fairly certain it has been taken over uh, by the AMA, by pharmaceutical companies, whatever else. Uh, I don't see much information as far as uh, things out there other than every once in a while you get some natural things, but for the most part, it has to do with pharmaceuticals. Uh, and so I've tried to contact them, but uh, to no avail and, and send information, but I don't see anybody uh, getting published. But anyway, bottom line is that uh, at that time, from one month, from May to June, all of a sudden, uh, Lyrica was the drug of choice. Now, if you're uh, anything has to do with science or anything has to do with medicine or, or um, anything that uh, is involved with research, uh, I wonder, first thing I wonder was how many uh, and it's, it's called double-blind placebo research tests. Valid research tests were done by the company to validate uh, its availability as far as a proven drug for fibromyalgia. Can't do it in a month. I don't know if anybody could do anything in one month. Uh, you have to have uh, different groups. You have to have so forth and so on. I think uh, if I read, I'm fairly certain that they tried this on uh, some women and they did have some positive response symptomatic wise. And so, whoa, there you go. That's it. That, that's, that's a drug of choice. Now, in, by 2009, I want you to understand it, about this. It, it's uh, from Pfizer. Uh, it's called Pregabalin, uh, Lyrica. Uh, and so, uh, again, how many double, how, standard double blind placebo research studies can be done in a short period of time? Uh, I want you to go back, uh, go into 2009 when Lyrica was uh, one of the four drugs uh, uh, subsidiaries of Pfizer that had to plead guilty uh, to misbranding uh, with intent to defraud or mislead. Pfizer uh, agreed to pay $2.3 billion settlement, uh, entered a corporate integrity agreement, so forth and so on. Uh, let me give you a little information on this. What they would do, Pfizer, was uh, they would send doctors out to other doctors' offices to introduce Pfizer and uh, it even says here, uh, uses that were uh, not medically accepted. They were uh, giving information out that would help different, medi uh, different conditions, shall we say. But the thing was that they weren't doctors of medicine. They were doctors of maybe biology, maybe English literature, <laughs> all these different things. But they were coming to say, this is Dr. Jones. I want to see Dr. Smith. Oh, oh well, geez, you know, I got to listen to another doctor, so forth and so on. So uh, they let him in and give them all this uh, information on what Lyrica could do. Uh, but somebody uh, blew the whistle. Uh, it was a doctor of, I think it might have been biology, that said, you know, it's embarrassing. I'm getting all this information out to them, and I don't see any research on it. Uh, and so uh, that led to that fine. 
Uh, Pfizer illegally promoted the drug. Uh, false claims, submitted government health care programs, so forth and so on, uh, for uses that were non-medically uh, accepted. Uh, and this was uh, in a report uh, pre-Gabalin 2012, as a matter of fact. Now, you have to understand, the FDA, uh, which I would say was, is controlled by the pharmaceutical companies, uh, based upon their history and research, they're so busy that the research that they receive from a new drug medication, and I may have covered this before, uh, is actually uh, received from the company that's making the drug itself. So if you're going to spend money on trying to produce something, you're going to have research on that product. Are you going to send in bad research? I doubt it. Okay. So the FDA is accepting all of this research from companies that are actually producing the same product, that they're trying to get on and accepted by FDA. The FDA looks at the report and says, yeah, okay, that's pretty good. Okay, we'll accept it. <laughs> no, sec you know, the, no secondary questions, evaluations, nothing like that as far as the research is concerned. Matter of fact, the FDA, once the FDA, and this, is, uh, this was uh, uh, valid by way of the courts, the courts approved this. Uh, once the FDA approves a drug, even if it kills more people than it helps, they can black flag it but they can't take it off the market, believe it or not. They black flag it, but they can't take it off the market. Just really uh, pretty horrible in that respect. So anyway, there's a lot of things that, uh, uh, a lot of medications that are out there that are not probably, uh, they're not probably properly researched as far as uh, what could happen over a period of time. I know, you know, if it's something like a real serious condition. <laughs> Sorry, as, as soon as we can, well, that's not good either. Sometimes the drugs, again, can be uh, more dangerous than uh, actually uh, taking care of the condition itself. So anyway, bottom line is that we want to make sure that whatever is going out as far as the market is concerned uh, is going to be acceptable and it's not going to harm more people than it helps. And that's the most important thing. So uh, am I, do I have this real, excuse the expression, hard on for Lyrica? Yeah, because, you know... Uh, I would like to uh, say that this medication would be good, pharmaceutical would be good, uh, but with all the side effects that's, that are similar to those that fibromyalgia patients have, uh, I can't do that. I, I can't tell you that just because it's going to help in one or two things, that it's got a dozen other things that people have. Keep in mind, what did I say? Side effects, fatigue, okay? Body aches and pains all over your body, muscle and joint pains and aches, fibro fog. Jeez, come on, folks. I mean, those are the main things that people actually have with fibromyalgia. Uh, the only thing I think it doesn't cover is sleep deprivation or, or lack of sleep. But uh, all the things I mentioned to you uh, can be uh, very, very negative, shall we say, to your symptoms and your condition. So if you're going to take Lyrica, make sure you look into it much closer as far as your symptoms and what the side effects are. Or uh, Civella or Cymbalta. Uh, those are the three major ones that they have out. But I, I think I covered so many of the other ones uh, for you in the past. This is number 67. 67 different uh, uh, talks that I give you on so many different things. Uh, uh, hi, Sherry. I couldn't take Lyrica. Thank you. I'm glad you didn't, to be honest with you. You know, if you want pain relief, I've, I've tried to stress to you, try omega-3. Try Omega-3 has two things that would help you. Uh, it's uh, the EPA portion, eicosapentaenoic acid, is a natural anti-inflammatory. Blocks the brain from producing arachidonic acid, which is your primary source of inflammation and pain in a gadi, in your body. DHA, decosahexaenoic acid, is a brain stimulant. Uh, it stimulates the brain so you think more clearly. So no, number one, your pain is reduced, and two, you're starting to think more clearly. Okay, you can eat. Eat fruit, eat malic, malic acid, is it apples, okay? That's a natural anti-inflammatory. Uh, turmeric, try that, that's, that's excellent also, okay? Uh, glucosamine and chondritin sulfate. That, uh, an MD in, in Tucson found those to be very, very successful for, for osteoarthritic and joint pains and so forth. Hey, take, enjoy it, okay? Enjoy those things. They're very, very safe, should be able to help you. Hi, Amanda, hope all is well. Thank you for joining us. But uh, if you're going to take medications without looking at the side effects, or if a doctor says, I'm going to put you on this and that, so forth and so on, first thing you should do, what's the side effects? Okay. And if he starts reading, oh, well, you know, it's just kind of general. No, be more specific. I want to know exactly what's on, what's in the side effects. And that way, you'll know what the side effects are, 
And if they match some of the things that you're having, ask them for a different medication. Say, I don't think it'll be good for you. I already have aches and pains in my body. The side effects are aches and pains. He says, well, it only might happen to a few people. What if I'm one of those people? Okay. Or, you know, I, I, or it makes me uh, have vertigo or, you know, if, hey, if a medication has vertigo in it as a side effect and you're doing some kind of a work or job that you have to be on your feet, I would not take that medication. Okay. So look at the side effects. Sometimes they can be extensive, uh, but uh, even a percentage is low. What if you're one of those percent, right? Uh, you want to make sure you take care of yourself and make sure uh, that you uh, uh, are looking at what you're taking and understand what you're taking. Anyway, thank you very, very much. Uh, may have maybe taken just a little bit extra time, but this is number 67. How do you like that? Uh, each week on Monday at 1230 p.m., I uh, add another subject that uh, is involved with some health condition uh, or some something involved with fibromyalgia or related conditions, okay? Uh, in this case, it's related to just, wow, if you're taking Lyrica and you don't know uh, what it has in it, uh, hopefully I gave you an idea that would help you, okay? Thank you so very, very much. Uh, and there are a lot of natural things, like I say, that are pain relievers that you can work with in, a pa in, in the future, I should say. Uh, in the future also, contact us. Hi, Charlene. Thank you. So nice having you join us. Don't be afraid to send in information or any questions uh, to me. That that'd be great. Uh, and we have wonderful, you know, Dr. St. Amon in California has been working on it for decades. So have I. Our program protocol is very, very good, uh, even if you have secondary conditions, because we help you understand what the secondary conditions are and what their symptoms are and how they relate to fibromyalgia. Thank you so very, very much. Every Monday, 1230 p.m., uh, good Lord willing, I'll be here. Uh, and uh, thank you very much, on, uh, Ahmed. I really appreciate uh, your comments. Uh, but uh, like I say, I'm here to help you understand. Each and every one of these I save, okay? So you can go back and check the other 60, 67 or 66 uh, uh, presentations that we've done on so many different subjects, specifically fibromyalgia, but fibromyalgia-related conditions. Thank you so very, very much. See you next week. Tell all your family and friends and your doctors to join us. Uh, I'm more than willing to uh, answer any questions and concerns you may have. Or you can call me at my clinic, 480-948-4955. 480-948-4955. And uh, we'll get back in touch with you if I, if I can't talk to you with patients. Uh, I promise I always do. Uh, and uh, do everything I can to help you. Thank you very much. Have a great week. And see you next week.